really interested in this topic and I'm glad to see people um, are as well. Uh, maybe this could be the start of something big, I'm thinking, uh, in your life and just motorcyclists in general. So um, the title of this presentation is The Impact of Motorcycle Design. So let's just start with a couple pictures here. Which, um, just to get you talking, what do you th which is safer to ride? One on the left, and the left. nearest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. speed control on the left. Okay. <laughs> Defined safe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're going to, you don't have to have a right or wrong answer in your head now, but we're going to talk about, you know, the design of motorcycles overall and the safety of the way they're designed. Um, take a look at this, these two pictures here and tell me what you think of this. So who, who do you think is going to have more severe injuries in a crash? Left. Harley rider? Stereotypes. Well, I just think about there, what is there to protect you in a crash? Your gear. What you're wearing. Gear, right? That is your, that is your, I guess, first initial thing, thing you think of is that the gear, but do you think a lot might happen before the gear comes into play. Has the anyone impact? ever thought of that? That the, that the gear might just be a, a, a good start? So we're gonna take a look at that now. Um, what do you guys think about airbags? Dislike, like? Anybody? <clears throat> Your last presentation, a guy said it saved his life, so. The airbag? Yeah. Who was it, Myron? Uh, I can't remember. So, I don't know if Myron's ever well. Saved his life? Um, how many motorcycles have airbags? That's it. That one, I think, just that gold wing. This gold wing has had an airbag on it since guess what year? Yeah. Nine? 2006. For ten years, it, they, there's been one motorcycle um, that has an airbag on it. So we're going to take a look at that a little bit today. So you've all chosen to ride, right? Why do you ride? It's fun. It's fun, it's fun all right? And really, you, we want to be positive. You know, you want to talk about the good things about riding. But what people really don't think about the crashworthiness of the motorcycles that they buy. Um, think about, uh, do you do this with cars? Yes. Do you go watch the YouTube video of the crash test? Do you want a five-star rating, right? Well, unfortunately, you know, we don't really... The manufacturers don't want to talk about it. The people buying the motorcycles don't want to talk about it. It's just there, okay? And so while we wouldn't even think of really buying a car that we didn't check its safety rating, we, ne we almost never look at the safety rating of a motorcycle because it doesn't exist, by the way. Um, so here's what people, especially in this place, do. The riders that are here today, you focus on what you wear. It's easy for us to comprehend. I can buy this gear. When I have a problem, it's going to help me. All right? And so we can control some of that risk, we think. Now, um, there was an article. Anyone get motorcycle consumer news? Ten years ago, you might have remembered getting a, reading a, uh, a dangerous designs article by someone by the name of Wendy Moon. Does anyone remember that article? Well, this is um, a pretty old article, 2006, and I learned a lot about motorcycle design back then just from reading this article, and I thought, wow, this is really going to, this is going to, the, the motorcycles we ride in 10 years are going to be so different because of this information that has now been presented to people, right? But I shouldn't be surprised that nothing really changed because since 1970, the year I was born, we've known about design flaws in motorcycles, but no one has ever done anything about it. Instead uh, of foc focusing on the crash worthiness, they focused a lot on like um, keeping you from a crash, right? Would you say those are good things? Traction control, ABS, Definitely, absolutely, because I think the manufacturers don't know where to go either, 
So they'll say, look, we're going to get behind making motorcycles that don't crash, okay, because we're going to put these special features on them. Um, now, fatalities and injuries related to, to motorcycling are still pretty high. But do you think there's more awareness for motorcyclists on the road? Do you think there's awareness campaigns and things like that? Yeah, and so despite all these things in the, the training that's out there, there's still an increase. And you might find today that like the trend of having high fatality rates in motorcycling might be more related to the way that they're designed than even rider training or, or um, these other things like um, awareness campaigns. Please understand that this is not like a bash of any particular model, brand, this, the other thing. Because all the brands that I've looked at have good and bad, we'll call, features or models. Not, not to say that one is bad or good. Um, I've purchased motorcycles that aren't probably maybe the best choice based on what we, sh we look at today. Because we want to buy the motorcycles we like and so I'm not this isn't really a discussion about brands and bashing and stuff like that so let's just state the obvious all right now this is just I picked this up off the street uh, internet for the water on road to remain but crashing into something at speed is going to se severely impact your health we're stating the obvious, all right? Wearing proper gear is only the beginning of protecting yourself. It's only the beginning. Now, this is where we're gonna jump right in, okay? Um, this presentation is gonna focus kind of on one type of crash that happens to be one of the most pre prevalent ones. And, and that is you hitting a car, maybe turning left, you're, you're going, you're going to hit something in front of you. Okay, that, that's what we're looking at here. We're not really focused on like someone who slides out in a corner or that kind of thing. Is any one of us in here likely to have a left car turn in front of us? Yeah, yeah even though we know about it though, we know it could happen. But it still could, right? So we're, we're not, just because we know of this, doesn't mean we're not vulnerable, okay? So, um, now, I went on the YouTube, but I couldn't find um, any crash tests really for motorcycles. You know, hey, does this model like stack up against other ones in a crash? Um, most of the crash test videos are like for some sort of inflatable airbag or that you can wear on your vest, or um, this one that I'm gonna show you is probably one of the better ones, <coughs> and it's, uh, it has to, it's just a motorcycle crash kind of video. <coughs> But there's three hits or collisions that happen in a front motorcycle crash. Actually, there's four because the first hit is like a double whammy. So I'm going to show it to you and just watch it first and then read the subtitle. And then we'll just, I'll probably show it again So because this is pretty key to the discussion. All right, so what did you see in there? What, what are the three collisions? So the bike is going to hit something, right? But then there was a second. There was an A and B of the first hit. Yeah, watch this. Okay, so let me pull up this. I'm going to play it again. I'll kind of narrate a little bit. So the first collision, the motorcycle is going to hit the, an object once. Then when the forks collapse, it's going to hit again here. Okay, so that is, the, we'll call the first collision the motorcycle hitting something. The second collision is the rider hitting the motorcycle. And then the third is 
you're you you're off the motorcycle or now and you're running into something else okay so I'm going to refer to these three collisions kind of throughout the presentation all right so let's go with the next um, idea and you know again, what speed we that was what speed yeah about 30 miles an hour okay and we're going to talk about that coming up and I just I do want to say you know I, I I can appreciate you guys coming to us the presentation where we're kind of talking about pretty bad you know bad stuff but awareness is so important I think to what we do and for the people coming after us the injuries that I'm most concerned with in this presentation have to do with pelvis and brain okay we know that if you have another crash uh, I'm sorry, if you have a crash, there's going to be fractures, abrasions, whatever, you know, there's going to be other things that are going to be a problem, but I'm not going to hit too much on these grayed out ones. We're focused more on the big ones, okay, the biggest priorities, because who's heard this phrase before? Right? And that's... <clears throat> That's kind of where we're going with this. Um, I can't remember the name of the mag a book, but there's a guy from Germany who wrote the, uh, the a, a motorcycle book. What was it called? And he talks about how our bodies don't really can't conceive how fast we're going. I think it's the upper half of the machine or something. Mm -hmm. And he said that you know if I ran it, if I could run as fast as I could into that wall, how fast would that be? Ten miles an hour, and I'd probably live. But once we get in our brain, once we're, what's the difference between 30 or 130, really? We can't, our caveman instincts can't really process that type of thing. And so we strap ourselves on these machines and we go very fast, but it's that sudden stop. So let's start with the pelvic injury first. Now, before we get into this, I just want to point out a couple of things. I'm going to try to say it in a softer way. Um, I'm going to call it more like a groin type injury, okay? Um, let's just take a look at a couple things here too. Major vulnerability, and we talked about, you said, what's the speed? So just to give you an idea of what, what the impact would be from 10 miles an hour to zero, it's like falling off a ladder. If you were to go to 20 miles an hour, It'd be like falling off of a one-story building, that sudden stop, and then at 30, three-story building. What can you tell us about that? What's happening there? What's happening as we go up in speed to the force? It's exponential. It's exponential, all right? Now, one of the most major points I can make is this tank slope determines the injury severity. Now, when I... When I read this in 2006, you know, I'm like, they're going to, someone important out there is going to read this information and they're going <coughs> to fix these problems. And here we are a decade later. Um, now I'm going to show you a, a, a video about the pelvis injury. Just watch it. Um, what hit did I uh, caption it with? The second hit. So we're not talking about when the tire hits the engine area. We're talking about the second hit with the rider. Okay, what's happening there? Getting crushed into the front of the tank. Yeah, this this impact ever, ever so ever so quickly is is a major problem and we'll just go so far as to say um, if you were going 30 miles an hour, what's that impact like? It's a big deal. Now I'm calling, I'll call this like the groin crunch, for lack of a better term, okay? Um, how far into this crash are we? In time? In time. Like 50 milliseconds or something like that. I mean, we're talking, this crash just began, and, and this is a serious problem for the rider, okay? Is all is Ant get all the gear all the time, and this guy's helmet going to help him right now? Not with that. This is right now. Those things have not served much of a purpose. Okay. 
I'll just let you watch it again. It'll just go quickly, okay? All right, so that, so you can get your mind kind of thinking about how that works, okay, with, with the fuel tank. So now let's talk about brain injury. In those, we'll, we'll use the same crash test video to, so you can remember what it is every time and we'll just bring it back in your memory. But So the, the, the motorcycle is going to do what when it runs into the car? Stop. Yeah, and what's going to happen to the rider's head? Keep going. Keep going. It's going to keep going, but it's going to slow and stop eventually. Okay? Let's just say it slows. But I said the head. Now let's focus on the brain. What's going on with your, with your brain? It keeps going. <coughs> okay, it keeps moving. Brain tissue bruising or stretching inside your head. Now, this can be tough. Like... To, to even listen to because you're like but I love writing and I like my head too you know it's like it's hard to reconcile these things but but it's awareness I think is very important what hits are involved with this video um, all of them okay all all three so let's watch what's happening and I'm gonna let you watch it one time and then I'll I'm going to pause at this time. Here comes the car, turn a left in front of him. Here it comes, blah, 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 and we're going to pause it now. Good. So in this particular instance, what happens is th they're two separate hits. And so what happens to our brain, it wants to do this kind of motion, right? So it's going to actually jump back and forth twice in a very short amount of time, okay? So that's the inertia that's going on in there. This now is the rider hitting. What's happening to the groin here? But we're not talking about the groin, right? But what the groin crunch is going to do now, it's going to pin you, right? It pins the rider. So then what happens to the brain and the skull? It just keeps kind of, it, it gets, it wants to keep going, but it can't because the body's pinned, right? Then, of course, it, before the third hit, you don't hit anything. You're just, you're, you're flying through the air, maybe landing on a shoulder, and that's causing issues as well. Could you be in trouble before you even leave the motorcycle? <coughs> yeah. 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 Now let's talk about the sharp jolt. This is what people think of with crashes, okay? This is when your head takes, head takes a whack from something. Again, we still have the same type of thing. It can bruise or stretch what's inside your head. And this is just an uh, airframe helmet from Icon. It shows where helmets make contact with the road typically in percentages just because this is uh, definitely something that can happen. Now let's watch this. Um, sharp dual brain injury I have I, I have two the second and third hits okay the first hit isn't really impacted with the sharp jolt to the to the brain now I stopped it here because we have like fairings windshields that your head could hit with the helmet on okay and then of course what's it hitting now uh, the car or something that's okay so this is now your head's taking a jolt this is where at gat really in helmets come into play at this point this is why you want to have those things on because a lot of injuries are suffered in this in this these second and third hits all right so now the the other thing I touched a little bit about other injuries just understand that anything you have in front of you could be a potential problem, okay? 
Now, there could be one savior in this, and I have kind of an idea right at the end where this could actually be advantageous. Handlebar height may be a factor. We're not talking, we're not talking ape hangers. We're talking like a sport touring versus a full-on sport. Um, what, what happens with the um, handlebars, you think? How do they, what do they do? Grab your legs. Yeah, wrap you up. Break your hands. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So fractures are common and costly, but usually not life-threatening when these things happen. We kind, of, we kind of don't have to think too much about these things, but you might want to think about armored gear. So maybe something harder underneath, because uh, tibia, tibia fractures can happen from hitting these types, these areas. Um, you know, you could protect your chest or whatever, so solid <coughs> under armor might help. Okay, but again, I'm not going to go too far into details on this because I want to focus again more on those brain and pelvis problems. Now that, now that I showed you the crash, okay, and the major problems, what would you think if you were an engineer that was that were designing motorcycles, what would be your number one crash goal? Like, what would you want to do? Soften the impact. You want to soften the impact. Let the rider be diverted easily. Yeah. Right there. Right there. Right there. First of all, we want to slow the rider's forward momentum before the crash. Speed kills. Speed's the problem. And we want to diffuse the energy in some way. If, you, can, if we can diffuse the energy, we're going to be, everyone's going to be in a whole lot better shape. Optimally speaking, as this gentleman said here, is, is absurd as it might sound, okay, you want to be thrown clear and come to a gradual stop. Um, now, how much, what percentage of crashes do you think someone falls off? Most. <laughs> 90%. So if you look at it like you're coming off one way or another, you want it to be thrown clear and come to a gradual stop, right? Now let's um, have a peek at what, what happens in a race bike crash. Okay, this is Mar Marquez, okay? MotoGP racer. Let's just, as we're watching another time, what, what's happening to his brain and pelvis? Nothing to turn, not a lot. Not until he hits that other surface and flips. By now he's diffused some energy and his head does barely touch. Could that be a problem? It could be. Now he got up. Okay, these guys probably get concussions, but he's in stone by the time it happens. But when his head does finally make contact, what's been diffused? Lots and lots. Okay. Now we have a similar rider on a similar style motorcycle in traffic. What is he more likely to hit? Car, curb. Right. He's he's gonna the type of thing we're talking about today is what this person is probably likely gonna face more than the slide out. Again, you could in a corner you could slide out like Mark Marquez did. But again, um, let me just show this again. Do, does the rider below have a gravel spot? No. This guy. What's in his path? Curves, trees, <laughs> all kinds of things like that. So, the, I mean, the gear is going to help, but we're, we're in a different environment. Yet, the motorcycles a lot of times are, you know, very similar in design. So, let's take a look at some uh, a soft or lighter subject here. Let's take a look at some design trends. Okay, so what do you think about these bikes? There's no tank in front of you. What are some of the characteristics of these bikes? Okay, so what was it? No tank. Very yeah, but it's got a shifter else. to catch you right up. Yep, the shifter can catch you, absolutely. <laughs> what do you notice about the wheel style? Oh, we haven't talked about this yet. Yeah. They are spoke wheels. So what is a spoke wheel going to do? It, it will absorb. How fast are these things? Not very. Not very. So 
they're actually not as bad probably as you would think based on the injuries I told you um, earlier. And, and one other thing about the pelvic, in, the pelvic injuries, when they are severe, and I didn't want to get too deeply into it, but is there a lot of stuff between the front of your body and the pelvis? Yeah, and so you might, and the doctors might have a hard time figuring out what's going on because of the, the trauma that happens there, okay? Now let's take a look at um, 40 years ago, the designs, okay? And I'm, what year is this bike? 63. 63. So it's very, it's kind of similar. What do you notice about these motorcycles now in this, you know, fast forward to 40 years ago from early on? I wouldn't want the gas cap there. <laughs> the gas cap? Well, even part of the tank, the handlebars have a lot more stuff. Okay. What, are these bikes faster than the early models? Oh, yeah. Okay. What do you notice about the wheels style still? They're still spokes. Why do you think this tank might be a little taller than that one? Maybe to hold more, right? So people started to spread their wings a little more on these things. Okay, it wasn't just like a basic transportation anymore. People might actually want to go longer distances. Now, around this time, first of all, what's in front of the rider here? Not not a lot of stuff yet. But what was really born in this age? Yeah, who invented the the fairing? You know, better. So, right after this, we started to say, hey, you know what? I don't have to be cold and wet anymore, right? And so those things. Grew. Now let's take a look at the same motorcycles, roughly, that you might have bought 40 years ago. This is your options now. Um, I think the CB750 was like, like this style today. It was fast and handled great and stuff like that. You probably toured on the other one, right? The other BMW model that I had up here. So now talk to me about, you know, amongst yourselves even, what, what are some of the trends you notice here? Uh, yeah. Wheels. 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 yeah, what do you think the top speed is on one of these? <laughs> Not too much. 80, 90 miles an hour. <laughs> 56. At least. <laughs> um, so, so they're much faster. They're much faster. What's the rider have in front of them now? Huge tank. Huge They have hump style tanks. Now you're going to see, not all do. And what else is in, in front of you? Knee fear. All kinds fear. of neat stuff. Now, again, this isn't like, you know, criticism. It's just the way design has gone at this point. Now, one thing I will point out is, you know, especially people in here, not a lot of us are cruiser riders, but, you know, let's just look and see here. 1959 Sportster, 2015. What do you notice about the design? Not Nothing's changed. <laughs> Nothing's changed yet. And it, work. it hasn't changed much. Okay, it hasn't changed much. But what are some of the what are some of the positive design features that you see? Uh, the brakes, the slope tank, spoke wheel. spoke wheels, and there you know, there, you got to see who it is behind the handlebars. So there's not a whole lot there, right? right. And so you know, pe there could be some merit to you know. The, the motorcycles that we're riding, even the cruiser uh, motorcycles, they could have positive things. Now, if someone wrote a Duke here. Um, love that bike, okay? And I want to show you a Duke trend. This was, the uh, I think, the original Duke in 2005, okay? What do you notice is right about this? It's orange. You can see it. <laughs> What else? Pretty the characteristics we talked about. Tank. Okay, very sloped tank. I'm not sure if this model had ABS. It still has the cast wheels, but the tank is huge. Remember that. The tank is huge. This was the 2010, and this is, I think, one of the most attractive motorcycles I've ever seen. I love this year of this bike for some reason. It, it just sticks out in my mind as a very cool bike. But what do you notice still about the trend? Slow. Right? So we got a pretty good thing going on here. We could get ABS on this thing to slow us down. So we, we have lower, slower forward momentum. We got a slope tank and, and nothing really much in front of us if something goes bad. Well, guess what they did? You guys want to guess? 
They, they humped it. <laughs> now, again, <laughs> this is still a great motorcycle, and I'm sure the, the chap who owns the one out there loves it too. But um, if it's still here. But, and it's a, it's a great winter beater, okay? The guy's got like uh, rain tires on it and all salted up. But um, again, trends. Why would they do that? Why, let me ask you, why would they do that? Style. Style? Consumer demand. Okay. I think we have a KTM back there that's, uh, what is that, the Super Duke? Yep. That's the Super Duke. Yeah. I think that, wouldn't you say maybe they want to align the model looks a little bit more, right? This is just a mini Super Duke if you want to spend less money, maybe. Okay, so there could be some marketers that got involved. Okay? You think? Really? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, while we're beating up KTM, um, again, I just found that these trends were, were very striking and easy to show you. Take a look at the 2000 prototype of the adventure. All right? What is this motorcycle's uh, purpose when it was kind of prototyped? Off road. Off road. Long distances. Tell me what's going to happen to the forward movement of the rider in this case. Remember, you want, you're going to get hung up, you're going to get thrown clear. Just look at the body. It might be a little higher here, but does this look smooth? Like nothing to really catch on? Yeah. So this is what they came up with eventually. This was the one. Now, it's pretty close. It might not look like it to you, but it is pretty close. If you look at the look at the tank, look at the bodywork. If you watch Dakar, the, the Dakar rally, you will see the motorcycles are still like this. Why? Because they want the rider to get off. And and do you think the market for Dakar race bikes is bigger than the consumer market? No, and the trend here, this is like a big trailie now. So it's like the big ADV bike. What did they do to the design? Obstructed the exit. Right, so now we have more of a sloped tank. The bodywork, it's still pretty smooth, but it still has now areas to catch you on, that kind of thing. They retain the spoke rims. This thing has um, a lot of positive features, like a lot of BMWs that are going to prevent the crash altogether, which we'll talk about in a second, a little while. But um, the person who won the Dakar rally in January, you think they could have done it on this bike? Probably not. It's heavier. I mean, Marcin, you're an off-road guy. If you were doing the Dakar rally, which one would you pick, 08 or 015? 08. Yeah, okay, because that's just the trend that they're going in. <laughs> what you can't see here is the width of the seat. Probably width of the seat? Narrower on the away. Width of the seat? Yeah, so again, I'm not going to I'm not gonna bash. Uh, okay. I'm just showing you a trend here. Well, they aren't running the big bikes in the Dakar anymore anyway. No. It's all 450. It's all 450. Yeah, because so, they... For, yeah, so... And, but if you, look at, if you look at those bikes, that's what they're doing. They're making it so it's easy to get off. So I'm going to show you now something that is one of the most underrated products available on the market. Not the motorcycle, but the airbag. Just watch this video. It takes about a minute or so. Now you're going to see some computer simulations that they've done. There's, it's from every different angle. I'm, I'm going to show you this a second time and ask some questions. Just, you can watch the first time through. I mean, how many times you got to see it, but you, I want you to really see what's happening in this in these instances, okay?
Now, let me ask you to watch it again. Uh, all I want you to think about when you're watching it is the brain inertia, the three hits, okay? The, what, really two and three. The, the rider hitting the motorcycle, and the rider has had two and three, and then the riders maybe had hitting something else, okay, with the sharp blow. So let's just watch and see what happens here. Remember, pelvis and inertial brain damage. So now in these, same thing, just what's happening to the head, what's happening to the pelvis. Now, I'll just kind of speak over at the end here. In my opinion, airbags are the silver bullet. They stop everything. They help your pelvis from hitting something. They slow your brain momentum. There's very little third strikes happening here. Look at this last one here. Did the, is the pelvis protected more? You can see it in some of the earlier ones. The airbag's gonna diffuse energy. As a matter of fact, you. If two cars go head on like this, is there more um, kinetic energy? Yeah. Yeah. So you want to skew. Because if you were to hit someone off center, what's it going to do to the cars? It's going to spin them. Now, you could get a nasty rotational injury if your brain stays here and your skull turns, okay, and something like that. But generally speaking, it's going to slow you down. I'll come back to airbags in a little while. But, but, now, John, though, the pelvic in injury on that bike, just because the gold wing has a little bit lower... Uh, right, but if you, did you guys notice the first one here? And it's worth noting to, uh, to show you again this one here. Watch the, watch the problem of the... Just, and I'll point them out here. This is the worst pelvic fracture you could get. This person's barely... You can watch by the flexing of the feet, okay? This person's pelvis is probably in pretty good shape right now, okay? It doesn't have a whole lot to do with the hump of the tank, in my opinion, as I'm thinking, you know, showing you this. Okay, watch this one here, see? Now, for the sake of argument, you could have a, a hump there. As long as your forward momentum is stopped before you have to make that contact, see? So again, I'm not, I can't, you know, um, destroy the, um, the, um, motorcycle uh, uh, companies to disparage them or whatever, right? you know, that's not what I'm here to do. It doesn't, you, we can have the designs we want with, um, with these safety features, okay? Now, um, so you guys pretty much saw that. We could go back to that if you want to um, in, in, a, in a little while, but we'll move on to some, a review of good design features, okay? I put good and bad, just because it's easier. Let's start from the top. If you, what's a good one? What's good? Anybody? Oh, we're talking about the yes. slope, slope tank. Okay, so you want to design the tanks more more um, smoother. Airbag, no airbag. We really don't have that choice right now. Spoke wheels are better than cast, generally speaking. Now, are there a lot of options? Someone was just telling me the new bike they're buying it has tubes in it still. Okay. Um, not all nice new motorcycles have um, spokes without with tubeless tires. Um, but again, can we make maybe spoke wheels more? Longer wheelbase. Um, a little bit about the wheelbase here. Um, what's going to happen to the motorcycle? What happens to the rear end of it? It lifts up and it will do what? It will eject the rider, okay? But before it does that, before it uh, ejects you, is it going to keep you on a little bit longer? 
Yeah, and remember, we want to get thrown clear. So longer wheelbases, you know, I have some notes here, um, like cradle frames, like on cruisers. With, um, like a lot of times these combinations come together. So a spoked rims, a longer wheelbase, and uh, um, double cradle frames tend to be like cruisers, right? So sometimes they're grouped together. If you talk about a shorter wheelbase with a more, now we get into the frames here, a more rigid frame is usually on a shorter wheelbase type of like sport bike or that kind of thing there. Why do you want a less rigid frame? For this type of thing, I know we want to keep it for the handling of the motorcycle, but what absorbs energy? Yeah, it's gonna buckle. It's if it's longer, it could have more of that type of um, movement as well. But uh, and one other thing too, I want to point out: when you are locked over on a motorcycle, it's harder for you to get off of it. Okay, the, like from being here, and then as you get increasingly down lower, it becomes harder because you're kind of more installed on it. Um, could, could you discuss the wheelbase again? I didn't catch why the wheel longer is better. You know what? Of all the information that I'm telling you, the wheelbase was the hardest one for me to kind of put into words and grasp myself. So here's it. Wheelbase isn't like a deal breaker, but first of all, if the motorcycle is long, okay, it won't raise up as high. Now we saw the gold wings pretty long, it did raise up. If it's, if, let's say we could glue the rear tire to the ground, we would be ejected easier, cleaner, than if it lifts and we're pegged to it a little longer. I think the bigger reason, the further out that front wheel sticks, that's time until it hits the, the engine. And if you could stick out 10 feet, you'd be doing a complete stop before you hit that object. The tighter it is, Okay. It doesn't get, it's the deceleration time. That's what I think they really it, I think that you're going to get the, the wheel is going to get backed into the engine compartment regardless, whether it's. But it can slow you down could, a lot or not. Very it much. could, it could. I think that what, what they recommended in this article was a longer wheelbase. And I think a lot of it had to do with the types of motorcycles that have longer wheelbases tend to be cradle steel frames that are more easily, and you know what, you guys can, yeah, definitely help me work out the wheelbase thing, because I don't have, like, I can't call the people up. The websites aren't there. The woman who wrote the articles passed away. <laughs> so I'm going off of, um, I'm, I'm kind of like breaking apart the information in my research. So I think uh, tell about is the bike comes off, good. it's adding its mass to you. Yeah. So you've got to be squared and creasing yeah. at that moment until it, Falls back, yeah. so you're you're adding all the metal behind you, pushing right. you into the vehicle. So exactly. I think some of it has to do with that front wheel being angled out more, so you got more time and space for the forks to to crumple. Maybe the, the forks the forks are going to compress and take some energy, but they're also going to blast you again when they hit the engine. Right. Okay, so you that go which farther to do it, which could could be a a a, a, a bigger pulse between the two. I, again, I'm not. No. I don't want to go too much on the wheelbase, but I don't really, I just bought a new motorcycle that's four inches shorter in wheelbase than my other one, okay? So, you know, we're going to have to make decisions and buy the motorcycles we want to buy. And I, I didn't say, I'm not buying it because it's got four inches less shorter wheelbase. You see what I mean? It's, it's just, these are just things to think about. So the tail lever the, 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 the largest mass is, like the engine, mm -hmm. relative to the front. Yeah, there's. I would say I would say if you could check box everything here, <laughs> you know, and leave one unchecked, wheelbase probably would be okay. Um, we can move down to uh, the frames again. We talked about the frames. You want them to give naked versus fared or windscreen, ABS, non ABS, and I put this one here, the lower uh, horsepower top speed. Why, why do you think I put that in there? You said. Exactly. In your head, you think you're, you know, this isn't very fast. You're doing 75 miles an hour. You know. So, again, the faster you crash into something, the more brutal it's going to be, and that's why 
you know, I don't. I, I guess the higher horsepower people want because it says I got a, you know, really fast bike, you know, and it and they are fast. Just remember, some combinations go together. Now, quick evaluation. So, I got the good and the bad up here. We can take it from the top. Remember, I asked you guys. Okay, so what are some of the? Let's just pick them apart here. Obviously, um, what might be a, a safer bike, quote unquote. Car. Well, maybe the older 1923 or 32 or whatever it is BMW because again, you're not going to be able to go that fast. What else? Okay. Well, yeah, let's go. We'll work, let's go to this guy now. What you know already from our discussion? Who's going to have more severe injuries, maybe in a crash? On the right. Now, again, this guy might have abrasions, fractures. This, but his pelvis is going to probably be better, maybe than this guy. And there's nothing for him to hit. Again, I don't, I can't predict if these two guys crash, who's going to be in worse shape. What I can guess, though, from what the information I'm presenting today is that this person might have more difficulty than we would initially imagine them to have. Um, let's take a look. Let's break down the Hayabusa here. How does that? Where does that fall? <laughs> I mean, it's got a lot of good features on it. They're great bikes. My buddy Paul owns one. He's always had one. He loves it. But, but the, the yeah. Um, this, I always loved this bike, too. I like the, the, the Duke, and I like that there. This was a Moto X from BMW. You guys remember these in here? Um, how's that design? That's great. Very Yeah, that, that bike has ABS option, too, I do believe. And it's, again, would you want to tour cross country on it? Probably no. not, right? So we're going to make choices. There's the Monster. I, I have a Grizo, but since I bought mine, they put, they went back to the spoke wheels, okay, for whatever reason. Uh, and the slope of the tank's pretty good. And there's an FJ09. All right, any quick questions or comments about these designs before I, I hit the next one? Okay. Um, so I guess the, 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 question, the question that I'll ask you is do we have to give up the designs we like you know to go to make them safer no it just i think that they have to be smart about things here's the good things now these you could get there's several motorcycles in here that you can buy right in the showroom that are popular good design okay what were the top two what makes the top left one pretty ideal Lack of, clutter. Lack of clutter. The tank's not that bad. Uh, what about the wheels? Spokes, and it's got ABS and the, you know, the tricks. Now the uh, the 9T over here, it has a lot of them, doesn't it? it? Ticks off a lot of the boxes. Okay. This is a uh, the Honda. I forget the model. CT X. Now this is a, a BMW concept like Roland Sands designed probably compete with like the bruiser bikes you know out of Harley Davidson or something but but this one too has the slope there's there's something there but like nothing to impede the flow this could probably help you move out um, in front um, every time I open a magazine I see scramblers okay um, with this here so is another take here Ron that standing up before the impact would be good um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, see, I, I considered saying something to you as a group, but I pulled back, saying there could be some merit to the, I had to lay it down. Remember Mark Marquez sliding, right? So theoretically, if you run into the side of a step van, or lay it down, what would probably be better? Lay it down, but I can't well, in good be faith be tell be people to lay their be, bike down. It would be better if you're going the same speed, but the theory is you can slow down more if you don't lay it down right. before the crash. Exactly, so the down, method is, people say, look, right. stay on the bike, try your best to slow it down, and because what, because what can you hit when you slide to lay it, lay it down? Um, so it goes down the same thing. I, I couldn't in good faith tell people, hey, you know, you're going to hit a truck, stand up and 
which I think we might have thought if I want to get, you probably thought about, well, what would I do right now? I'd probably want to do that because I could fly through the air instead of hit this truck. But um, I can't really recommend any specific behavior like that. You know, just, I wouldn't do it myself. <laughs> but um, One thing is possible riding style. So that, actually, I've had that accident. Okay. I, well, I was very lucky. I jumped over this car. And it was a split second thing, but then I, I ended up bruising my hip. So you had some time to react now if you want. Yeah, I really didn't have any real time, but yeah, it's very quick, like anything. But, yeah. but um, I, I tend to ride with the balls of my feet on the Okay, legs, right, so you're... Spring. Right, so, so the cruisers that we said were great bikes for all this stuff, where's your feet on a cruiser a lot of times? Up front, so this guy was able to do something, utilize that body position a little bit better. Um, the cruisers are there, of course, we got the gold wings. Um, now, before we, so, so now we're going to start to look at solutions, right? Solutions to these problems. And there's a lot of smart people in this room. And, and I hope you're not here saying, yeah, geez, maybe uh, I'm just going to come out and get a cup of coffee. There's some real opportunities for smart people in this room. And I, I truly believe that um, to make a difference. So, first of all, do manufacturers somehow, do they kind of have some responsibility in what they're giving us? Do people think about the crashworthiness of a motorcycle when they buy it? No. And I think they seem to, manufacturers in general seem to be hiding behind the fact that there's a belief that motorcycles are inherently dangerous. So, you know, that's the product. If you want to get on it, you're great. And then they don't think about what they could be doing to mitigate the problems, okay? So, first thing, we've talked about this ad nauseum. But this is probably one of the bigger things you want to be thinking about if you're designing a, a manu if you're a manufacturer. Crumple zone tanks and energy absorption materials in front of the rider. Now, I haven't seen any of these out there, and a lot of times there's a tank right in front of you, but what if there was some energy absorption type material there, like the EPS foam and a um, helmet, okay? How about a tank bag? Well, yeah, tank, what about a tank bag? Tank, a well, tank bag could be like a, a convergence item that someone could make their tank bag a safety item. I don't know how that would work. We'll get to that a little later. I think it depends. You know the ones that, that, that you can kind of stick them on like uh, mm -hmm. there's a coupling? Mm -hmm. I thought of getting one, but then I said, well, you know, it's going to hold me up. Maybe I want the magnetic one, right? Because the magnetic one's going to let me off easier. So. Again, we can use this information to make all kinds of different decisions. More spoke wheels. And thinking through the problem, I thought that these two things could be big deals if, if someone were to manufacture them. The second hit is a problem. We could have a concussion before we get ejected. So if there were a way to stop it, so if this tire was bashed in, or what if there was a wedge-shaped design that pushes it off, diffuses that front wheel second hit? Again, I'm not an engineer. But that doesn't seem awful. And, and in cars, I don't know if you guys understand how in, in the front of a car, what happens to the front end of a car in a front end crash? It crumples, but also the engine gets stuffed underneath. So you drive a 1960 Buick, the engine's coming through the engine or the passenger compartment. Well, now they throw them down under the car, okay? Why not make it so that when that happens, the engine isn't so solid in position that it can't be deflected. Again, just an idea. Then, of course, quality brakes and tires. Cheap brakes and tires should not be like, I guess, um, made. <laughs> you know, people say, I want to cut the cost of this motorcycle, so I'm going to put the cheapest brakes I can put on this. Maybe they say we're not going to cut there, okay? We'll, we'll do something with gra less graphics or whatever, it won't sell. <laughs> so what do you think about the modern tires which are angled really cornering? And yeah. They don't have as big a chunk in the middle. I talk a little, bit, a little bit about tires with what the rider can do, but a lot of it has to do with like um, the, the, the amount of traction you're getting for them. So hold off on that because the, you're right, the tires are going to make a big difference. Because it's going to keep you upright and it's going to give you control to stop and turn. Um, and, and I think the biggest one, and I saved it for the bottom here, where are the airbags, both external type and for the rider? Now this, is, this airbag comes out, to, it's an external style. This is to restrain the rider. 
Why? What if one shot out here to stop the second hit? You see what I mean? That couldn't be that difficult. Again, but it's going to cost money. What are some? Yeah, I mean, what do you guys think of the, the cost versus benefit of this? A lot cheaper than the medical care. I mean, if you think about that, you know, I mean, how would people pay? You know, back in the 50s, they had airbags. And you know what the law said for cars? You can put airbags in or seatbelts. Well, got to be one of the two. So what did they go with? They went with seatbelts, cheaper, whatever, this and that, okay? So car manufacturers started putting them in their car saying, you know what? We're Volvo. Okay, we're gonna, you're going to pay, but you're going to get the airbag. Why some manufacturer, Honda who has it, hasn't said, look, let's just say what it is. It's going to be a more expensive motorcycle, but here's why you want to buy all our models with this, with this add-on airbag. Okay? Um, it, I think the issue is also the, the safety of the airbag. Does it trigger when it's meant to, or does it trigger when it's not meant to? Right. Yeah, right. Now, now, there's liabilities there, but I will say this. How long have airbags been standard equipment in cars? They're working pretty well. Yeah. You think we got the sensors down? I mean, Goldwings is uh, down. Go ahead. So, there, I read something recently, and I forget the manufacturer, but there was uh, some mention of a European standard that's okay. kind of developing or coming that's going to require airbags. Mm -hmm. I talk a little bit about legislation at the end. So anything of, of, along those lines, mm -hmm. I think that they're going to stop making the Grizo because they don't want to put ABS on them because they see ABS is going to become like a regulated thing. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. I could be dead wrong on it. Mm -hmm. um, but this is, <laughs> the, I've made some pretty fun connections in, in this presentation, but I want you to think about something for a second. Is it too far a bridge to cross between what people want and what's available? You can see by this scooter right now, it's in the back of the room over here, okay? According to what we've talked about with injuries, what do you, what, what is good about this? Slow. <laughs> it's not that slow. It's not that slow. It's not that slow. Let's talk about the pelvis and pelvic yeah, injuries. I mean, you could, if you went up, Ooh. you're going to okay. be right. Okay, but I'm yeah. saying there's nothing right here. Right. And that's where we're starting to get that 50 millisecond whatever whack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a little, little, maybe a little slower most scooters are, if you will. This has ABS, okay? So ABS, again, mm -hmm. is like very common. So here now we have the motorcycle. Is this too far of a stretch, design-wise? No. Your knees can touch on that one. Knees can touch? Well, these are these two motorcycles, BMW C650 GT and the Honda NC700X, Marcin has one. <clears throat> Safer designs are more in reach than you might think. This is the frame on a scooter, okay? This frame is for this motorcycle, okay? This is the frame for the NC700X. Okay. At the plant somewhere, this product gets pushed into the 700X assembly line or the 700D Integra. Yeah. It just goes two separate exits. Starts at the same motorcycle. Marcin, do you like riding yours? I love it. So you've given up nothing Right, performance-wise, when you ride this motorcycle. Mm -hmm. For what else do you see about the maybe collapsibility of this? Yeah, like, mm -hmm. Now that could. Maybe. I'm not an engineer. That might hold you up more if it were to bend in. Okay, I don't know for sure, but um, to me, this is we're there. Oh, by the way, what product would fit perfectly yeah. right here? The airbag could go here. Part of the problem with the Goldwing one is they had to strap it to the seat because when you go forward, it wants to pull the airbag with it. But if it was co were coming out of here or something, you have all this.
part of the motorcycle in front of you to reinforce that. So, again, Honda, I think, what, what do you put here? What goes here? Oh, that's storage. storage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honda decided, the marketing department probably said, you know what? First of all, people only want to buy something that looks like a motorcycle. Okay? This isn't as appealing to most people in their mind. So we're going to market a motorcycle. It looks ADV. And a lot of people put gas underneath it, the seat here. But we can market this thing fits a full-size helmet. They're going to love it. They can put all that crap in this thing. Instead, the company that owns the probably the patents on the motorcycle airbag decides to put a storage con the container where they could have put the state-of-the-art every man airbag. But they didn't make that decision. I don't know why, but you know what? How does a schlep like me figure this out? I'm sure they looked at it. I just don't understand why it's, it's not even available. And I hope that they are. Now, we want to buy the motorcycles that we want to buy. So, you, let's say you're, you're, all your stuff's on the bad side, <laughs> right? But I got to have this bike, it speaks to me, because we all know that they're visceral machines, right? I look at it and I say, I want that. I, don't, I just want to ride and have fun on it. And you, I don't want to think about the rest. You can be free to buy those, those uh, motorcycles still. Here's a couple of things you can do. First of all, try to buy motorcycles with ABS, traction control. The inertial measurement unit is now a product that Bosch makes that is on certain motorcycles that it, it makes the multi-strata uncrashable. I'm sure it's on a lot of these motorcycles here, the R1. Um, you can still crash an uncrashable bike, like the Titanic went down too, didn't it? <laughs> but spring for ABS. There's no reason not to. Of course, maintain and improve your riding skills. Now, in this particular, you want to be more traffic type stuff or you want to run into that, that car. Starting on your next ride, you can do this one. Just, I mean, ride slower, but especially when you're in traffic and at intersections. Someone could pull out of that driveway. You know, whenever I see somebody hauling through a, a, like a residential neighborhood or a city or something like that, I'm like, you're just not going to be time and space on that one if someone pulls out without looking. Be, you know, so, so take the speed down. Increase your awareness. And to your point, this is hard for us, you know? <laughs> because they're expensive. Um, now, my, I think both my, tire, both my bikes need new tires in the back. <laughs> so, I, again, I can follow my own advice. But is a tire that's near the wear bars, not there yet, is it gonna handle as well as a new tire or a new work? It's not. If, if you take the ARC, I've taken um, the ARC a couple of times around Heinz class, uh, MSF class, advanced rider class. I took it on my Grizo with a worn tire because I knew I was gonna be beating the tar out of that tire. Next week, I put a new tire on it and I couldn't believe the difference in stopping distance. It, it really did matter. So, yes, practice like the, all you can with that worn tire to beat it up before you take it off. But, but don't, don't think that a, a, a worn tire, especially near the wear bars, is going to handle nearly as, forget about just rain dispersion and water dispersion, it's the, just the traction grip itself. Um, think about the modern tires, I mean, they, they, yeah. they used to be sort of square years ago, but now they're all angled for, for the corners. Well, but you've got less tray in the middle. Of course, if the rub is yeah. stickier, maybe it's okay. But uh, a, a tire is, you know, the design of a tire, I really can't get more into like, like the profiles of them. Mm -hmm. I do know that they like to make the profile better for when you're leaned, okay? Mm -hmm. More surface area, that kind of thing. But um, I know they put, what do they put in the middle a lot of times on these new tires? Versus the outside. Harder rubber. Yeah, there's dual compounds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's... You know, it, it, tires are a big thing, but if you buy... Yeah. Now, maybe you can't afford the best tires in the world, but at least keep them in good shape. Keep the tread on them, right? Um, consider what you've installed in front of you, obviously. You don't want to put sharp things in front of you. 
Thank you, Mark. Now, I have, yeah, I have raise your seat or sit on beads. What do most people do with the seating options on motorcycles? Why do they drop them? Get on and off, foot down and stop. Are those very legitimate reasons to do this? Absolutely. And if you're going to be like, and then tip over, that's not good either. But I went to BMW's website. I think every motorcycle that they sell has a taller seat option. I'm not saying if you're short, you got to get the tallest one you can. But I'm going to show you why that might be a good idea. Okay? This is from the owner's manual of um, a motorcycle. It shows different seating positions. What immediately struck out in my mind when I saw this? Less obstructed. Yeah, with just taking the screws underneath and doing what they said that the bike can do straight out of the crate, what, take a look at those angles, right? Again, you might be having to do a one-foot stop or you know that kind of thing, but um, who has be had beads on their seat? How sexy does that look? <laughs> Not very. Not very, but, but it's going to raise your butt a little. And, oh, yeah. and it's going to do what? <laughs> yeah. Um, now, who has airbag vests? I have a neck brace. Anyone have airbag vests? They hit? Okay, got a couple people have them. Are these still good things to have? I believe so. And I'm not going to get too much into the airbag vests. They're going to help you with what hit, though? One, two, or three? Three. Your third one. Remember... You will be into the tank and hitting your motorcycle before it gets ejected, before it, it works. It's going to help you with the other things. Yes, it will. But, and same thing with my neck brace that I, the Liat neck brace that I have. It's going to help. And trust me, a lot of people do get hurt in those third hits. Um, and maybe someday we can do a discussion about those vests. And I'll talk a little bit more about them in a second. We talked about legislation. Okay. You know what this thing's called? Ron Hines and I laugh about this. It's called the Babe Cage. Yeah. <laughs> the funniest name I've ever heard of something. But Can you I, catch them in that? I think that, I think that <laughs> art loves a bigger government, and they should make more rules. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> no, I think I think personally, my own just now. People have different beliefs on things. My belief is that it's us in the manufacturers, the stakeholders, that are going to make the change. I don't think the government regulating certain things. No, I like seat belts. I like airbags in cars. I think ABS eventually being pushed through perhaps is a decent um, trade-off, okay, for legislation. But if we start to, you know, ask the government to come in and take care of it, we might be all riding around with this, okay, which I'm sure the woman likes it. Why is it even closed then? <laughs> now, um, here's, here's where I want someone in here, I want people in here to go, go on Shark Tank and, and, and sell something huge, okay? These ideas are, I came up with some of these ideas just because I thought of the problems and what could be some solutions, and I'm just a schlep. I don't have any engineering degree, Those, I'm not a scientist. But you might be. After, are there a lot of aftermarket seat manufacturers out there? Yeah. Is there? You think it's brutal competition? No. For for like the saddle makers, There's Russell. You gonna buy a Russell? You gonna buy this one? Right, Corbin. You know they're competing for six seven hundred dollars of your money. The first one that comes up with an airbag that comes out here will probably charge more, but they'll probably sell a whole lot more of them. I don't know how it would work. Physics-wise, but you're sitting on something that could be really tethered. I know right now there's these little hooks that hold your seat on. You'd probably have to tether that seat a little bit stronger to have the airbag work for you. Um, this one, too. This is Dionysi's, um like airbag system that works with the Ducati through radio communications. Not a tether now. It, the sensors are going to do their thing. This vest is good for what? Crash. Which hit? Three. Three. So it doesn't do a whole lot for you. 
What about someone coming up with a belt? A very subtle way to okay, to protect certain parts of a person's body. This is for elderly people that fall down. Okay, um, if we can make these people airbags so when they fall they don't break a hip. Well, there's got to be a place we could stick something like this where it will help us. Turn that around. Another thing that I thought that was really let's rethink the vest thing again. Here's the million dollar idea, I think. And let me pull back this question mark. Remember how we have things in front of us? Right? Like windshields and stuff, fairings. They're all on these bikes. Why not use that stationary part of the motorcycle? Why doesn't all the airbag in this vest explode forward in front of the chest and face? That airbag might actually help in the first and second hits because if I can get this airbag to go to pop off before my groin crunches and, my, and, and I get ejected and can slow me down, that would be a really worthwhile product. Right now, I'm beat to the ground by the time I need this vest. Um, your seat side is better one that I think worries me about having it in a jacket. It's going to be very really uncomfortable in the summer. Mm -hmm. you know, well, you in the vest, the yeah, but you're right. You're right. If it's built into the bike, that's not a problem. So we got built into the bike. We got the, the maybe a belt. Okay, I don't know how it would work, but you know my thinking is this: if the belt is just a little better, if if so, if a belt can go off quick and give you four or five inches of cushioned area, that might be enough in that fifty millisecond. Again, I'm not a doctor or an engineer, but um, that could be something. <clears throat> how about this? Some, but the parts exist. Why not? Sell, somebody sell a universal airbag system that mounts to a motorcycle. It's not that easy. It's like a tank bag. He, here's what I'm just going to say about that, Dave, and you're right. Nothing's easy. But a lot of people are getting killed because of this stuff, and I'll, I'll say this. The sensors exist. There's probably a warehouse full of the sensors at Honda. The, air, the inflators exist in the Helite things we buy, okay? This is not something that has to be like, in 10 years I want to get us to the moon. We have the, we have the parts. They could probably go to an airbag manufacturer today and have them do much of the design work for mounting. The biggest problem, at least on a BMW and probably on many of the others, is getting something solid to mount it to, which has got to be, it's pretty much got to be attached to the frame. Well, the, other, the other thing we've got to be careful of is that people like putting accessories on these things. Yeah. They've got an accessory on that covers where the airbag is meant to come out. There's going to be, I can see all sorts of legal problems. Well, no, you get, if you have, your airbag goes off in a car with a coffee mug here, you're in trouble in your glasses, okay? I mean, if you, anything in front of your face and your airbag goes off, you're going to have a problem. Yes. Now, again, would someone say, hey, maybe I'll forego the tank bag because I want this thing clear in front of me? I don't know. Again, people don't have that choice to make. They can't make the choice. No one offers one. So I think your biggest problem yeah. with airbags is purely all these manufacturers are worrying about the legal side yeah. of it. When it doesn't go off when it's meant to, or if it goes off when it's not meant to, and all this stuff, and they're talking about million dollar lawsuits. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, I, it's, it, tur it turns people away. That's why this, you know, in America, People are entrepreneurs, they take risks, they figure stuff out. You know what I mean? I don't know if someone's... If you go back which one? scooter slide, several... That one's good. We need two more. Give me the frames. In cars, one of the things they did that helped with accidents, most of all, was programmed structural weakness in the frame, okay. so that the frame collapsed predictably. This strikes me as terrible okay. for that um, impact, okay. the second impact. But if you made this frame so that the forks were stronger than the frame supporting them, and the whole thing folded under the engine, yeah. and cleared everything up here out of, out of the way, way. Mm -hmm. 
that to me is a, a better safety Very design. Right. And you can do it there as well. Right. So the inverse of what that is to want to do is going to fold up. Right. Right. So again, I don't really have the answer except just to, you know, let's put the man on the moon by 1969 or whatever Kennedy said. <laughs> let's just get these airbags on there. Now, one other thing, this is this is low tech, if it ever if there ever was low tech. Now, right here, this is the this is a V-Strom, new V-Strom tank. <clears throat> Why not sell a, a, a product that is maybe Teflon and reduces the angle? I mean, people buy they tank make excess, the they make excess, yeah, I mean, a tank <coughs> protector, um, I don't know, you know, it's like, when you go to like these websites like Twisted Throttle or something, you're like, put my bike in there, and there's like 60,000 things, like this, this cover bolt has a, certain mount to it you know you can get anything made for every bike so i don't know how you would universally <laughs> apply this but i gotta think you take the top selling f uh 20 bikes and you figure out a way to get their tank to be a little but then you're gonna again you gotta say to the people look you bought a bike it's unsafe and people aren't gonna want to hear that you see what i mean so it's i understand why you have little data to say how much safer it would be with yeah. with that little Right. What I can say all is, that, is it's, it's a step in the right direction, but you can't even. What I can say is, research and computer-generated models have proven that a gradual slope will prevent injuries more than a, a more blunt one. So what I'm saying here is, any item that can be attached to the motorcycle that can reduce the slope, make it more gradual, theoretically, would have an impact on pelvic injuries. I mean, do I know for sure? If I have not. I, this was this was done with Photoshop. <laughs> okay. John, a, a, a in curious, the real world, who knows? A curious question is uh, BMW in particular. Obviously, the first motorcycle that had ABS, and yet they still correct me if I'm wrong. Do not have a, an airbag on any of their bikes. While Honda has had it, as you said, since 2009. So, is it a cost feature, or you know what? The marketplace just That's doesn't it want it. That's what and it if is. they don't want it, they're not. I mean, manufacturers are not going to say, well, John, it's good for you. Spend the extra $1,000 anyways. So I don't think we as motorcyclists as a group are just at the point that you're unfortunately you're discussing. Sad, right. sad to say, mm -hmm. I think we just accept the fact it's a, it's a risky sport and, you know. Yeah, some of us still like, don't ride with helmets, right? I mean, that's the scary part. Yeah. 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 I think it's an implied liability issue. I have a friend of mine who owns a business. He installed some fake video cams. He got in big trouble because somebody got hurt and he didn't have a video of it. He implied he was recording. I think if an airbag, if a motorcycle manufacturer puts an airbag on a motorcycle, it goes off inadvertently because you're riding off road, or it doesn't go off in a crash, they hold liability. So until it's perfected, I don't think we're going to see it. Absolutely. That's not even the other issue. With working with GM and, and all them, back when the product was here in, in the United States, we actually had good quality control. Mm -hmm. Now since it's the world market, what have you heard on the radios and the TVs about all of these places that are over in Europe that have made airbags? They're throwing projectors out of airbags when they go out. Mm -hmm. I mean, right, the quality out there now versus what it was, right. it's not there. Which, you know, which could also be brought back to the point that someone can make a quality one. They can get over the liability issues. I mean, didn't Ford not, what did they do? Not recall their Pintos? They decided to pay for dead people instead? I, again, I'm not a lawyer either. I think it argues against your, your non-regulatory uh, intervention argument. Okay. Um, because that, that way you eliminate the liability problem. Um, it's, it's mandated by the government. Okay. Either that or they make it an option, and when you sign for the option, you sign a waiver. This is, I understand, uh, there, there could be an occasion when this airbag doesn't function perfectly. Yeah, but that's not going to go there. Yeah. That, that that's like Bristol Mountain, Dave. Yeah. You sign yeah. a thing, I'm responsible. Bullshit. Yeah. You yeah. fall down. waiting for the government to work. Well, you know, as, as we talk here, as we talk here, you know, I, I don't want to beat up the regulation, the liability, all that stuff. What I can say is this. We need to slow the rider down. You want to put a harness that's tethered, that does some sort of yo-yo thing in the back? 
that if that goes off, it doesn't cause a problem. Any, slow that rider, keep their groin off the tank. If it's from behind tethered with a special type of uh, you know Direction. reel of some kind, that, that is, I don't I don't have the answer. I'm just saying we need you, the the solution. The problem is groin crunch and and move and, 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 and uh, the the sudden stop. Figure out how to how to make that cheaply. How about an exploding well, seat? Just yes, yes. Eject, eject. 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 Uh, but Mike Garvin said that, uh, you know, BMW was the first to come out with the ABS brakes. Well, we're in our fourth or fifth generation of braking systems now. And it is the best ABS system out there. On most of the bikes, the larger touring bikes, the GSs and everything, they're all linked together. You grab the front brake, you get 100% front and rear brake. The rear brake is by itself. You can use that to scrub off speed or set your rear end in a hairpin turn, but it's still ABS. Now, they firmly believe in ABS to the point that every bike produced by BMW today has ABS. You used to have an option. One guy said, oh, I don't need ABS. Bullshit. ABS in a, in a panic situation will help to save your life. So that's what BMW's focused on. Secondly, they're focused on anti-dive front ends on the boxers, and on the big touring bikes. Even, you go back, this is a vintage 1961 bike, and this has Earl's forks on it. Now, those Earl's forks are also anti-dive. The reason that they never kept that up, there was a hiatus between the Earl's forks and the telelever <coughs> anti-dive that's on the boxer engines, is the damn thing is heavy. It tend to wear out the front tires real quick. But it was a safety device, and that's what they focus on. They focus on, even on the big bikes, slipper clutches. Can you imagine that on a six-cylinder bike, a slipper clutch? Which really makes your downshifting very smooth. You don't get the driveline shock if you have to downshift in a turn. Okay, so that's what they're focused on. Um, I don't ever see airbags being, I don't know how they can do it. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and I'm not here to debate no, the, no, no, no. the likelihood that they will be. I'm just saying that if I were in a front crash, yeah. if I went into the side of a van, I want the I'd hope the hell I was on a gold wagon. Just because you saw the videos yourself. It solves pretty much everything. And and again, it's I my I don't know the person said went off saved his life that was here last time, but we could go. We can go back and forth. All I'm here to say is these are the problems, and you, there's there's things you can do in choices, and in you know what you how you behave on a motorcycle. Now, what I'm gonna what I have for you here is this is the original bootleg copy of the article. If you want to read it from 2006, it talks about delta V and all kinds of scientific stuff that I didn't want to introduce because I didn't understand it as well. But um. I do want to say that um, while I'm here, I'll give a little perk to my, um, you know, my school. Um, try to compensate for design flaws, learn something new, refresh skills, or affirm that you have everything down. I just want to talk about what's going on this, with my courses on road this season. They're kind of like Jim Ford's, but they're 30, they're about three hours locally, and it's kind of like we go through a set of skills, and um, they're little tours, okay? Which one of these two you think would help maybe with today's topic to help you avoid this problem? The traffic one, right. So the back road skills is another one too. Most interest is in the back road skills because people want cornering confidence and so we can work on that. Um, there's pre I have a schedule up now, I'll show you that, but um, I will cost some schedule. They're 99 bucks. I'm waiting to hear back from the MOA about me doing it out of Hamburg. Um, so I will be there. It's just a matter of us figuring out how but I'll be running the courses out of the MOA rally in Hamburg uh, site. Hope, I mean, they've expressed they're sending me their offer, right? Better roads over there. Yeah. So if you, yeah, we know what some pretty good ones are down there. And um, now I just got news also about my on-track course. This designed for street riders. Last year I did it. Um, Twenty-five people was what I was shooting for. I got nine, but we had a ball. And it was it was like a private track day. 
Um, I opened up two days ago and I already got six people. Okay, and then uh, one guy that came last year, um, he's bringing like three or four of his buddies. So I mean, I think I'm going to get to the 25 relatively quickly. Where are you running it, John? New York Safety Track in Oneonta. Um, the way I the way I'm doing the course is. There's spots along the track where I teach certain skills or we discuss certain skills and as you're out there you can be refreshed in the different areas. We will, um, there's minimal gear prep. You know what the gear prep is for your motorcycle? It's not leaking. <laughs> the tires don't have cracks and have tread on them. And that's it. There's no prep. Gear is anything you see in this shop. Okay, head to toe. Um, good quality gear, sport touring stuff. This is, there's free camping the night before and after at the track, so we also go both directions, which is kind of a rare thing. Morning, afternoon, we'll switch. There's a track photographer, you can go to my website and see the pictures from July. Um, it's 350, but I, I can't really offer what I am offering there for any less. Um, if you were just to call up New York Safety Track Say I want to come down to one of your track days, you'll probably spend 250 and we'll be there, you know, with a hundred people and you'll get like 15 minutes an hour on the track. This is open all day except lunch. And if you buy a bike from Art and you wanna get just you're like, I think I'm pretty good with my skills, I might listen to what you have to say a little bit, but I really just wanna get I just wanna get in sync with my new motorcycle. Come ride the track all day, you'll 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 know it in ins and outs uh, before you leave in that one day. Um, I'm also coming back the 27th, going to share basically the skills in the class. I mean, if you, I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you everything that's in it, everything we work on. Um, it, and if you want, if that's enough for you, knock yourself out. If you want to work on it in a more structured environment, then that would be great. So here's here's the bottom line. Uh, these are right now. This is the schedule for the on-road course courses. I have a way to sign up for them. At my website and this is the July 25th day all right if you're not quite sure about anything you can just this is like a brochure you can take this you want to sign up with a couple of buddies um, get in touch with me uh, because I'm, I'm gonna get try to require deposits pretty early so that if I don't get the numbers but the way it looks now is that it's gonna be um, it's gonna be up great it's July middle of July the, the, the day was perfect so you may not um, have any questions for me today, but you know you can grab some a Dangerous Designs article from the original thing I read and take one of these with you. If you want to talk to me about any of these things, done. Just uh, come on up and we'll do that. But guys, thanks for coming and come up with something, you know? And if not, just watch yourself. Watch your groins, watch your brains. Thank you. Not what we're writing, though. It was very informative.